Former First Lady Nancy Reagan passed away in 2016. Two years later, we're gaining new insight into one of the most influential First Ladies in American history. A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to talk with Mrs. Reagan's longtime press secretary, Sheila Tate, during her visit to her alma mater, Duquesne University. She's written a new book, Lady in Red, an intimate portrait of Nancy Reagan. Shayla, welcome back to Pittsburgh. Well, thank you. It's great to be back. I understand you have Pittsburgh roots. Tell us about well, it. Well, I went to college at Duquesne and loved it. And I worked here for a couple of years, worked, to, worked and did some work at your own station. Um, KDK. Organizing ads, you know, food ads. It was a, it was a good learning experience. Well, I bet it was. Mm -hmm. and, uh, from food ads for KDK to the White House, <laughs> how did that happen? Well, there was quite a bit in between, too. I, did, I went to graduate school for a while at the University of Denver in mass communications, and then I worked for Hill & Knowlton, a big PR firm in Houston, transferred from there to Washington, and that's when, um, about a year after I was there, I got the opportunity to go to work for Nancy Reagan. You've written a terrific book about Nancy Reagan called Lady in Red. And of course, those of us who remember her always remember the red color. Yes, Reagan Red it was called. Reagan Red. Yeah. How did that come about, the red color? Did she just like it? That was her color. That's what she loved. She just she preferred to wear red anytime she could. She loved it. This book <clears throat> is not really a tell-all book as much as it is some intimate stories about Nancy Reagan. I tell you what it is. It's a it's an effort to try to help people have a better understanding of who she was as a human being, um, because it was always such a you know it almost felt like a cardboard cutout image of her, and it didn't do her justice. And when after she died, I met I was at the memorial service and I spent time with some so many people who had worked with us, and they kept saying, I wish more people knew her the way we knew her. And I finally decided to set out on a journey to see if I could make that happen. How hard is it being press secretary to a first lady? Well, it's, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of tension, uh, but you find yourself learning to live with it. You know, you accommodate it. Otherwise, you'd be probably, because you always worry about saying the wrong thing. She was the reason that I was able to do a good job, because what she did the day that I started, she said, I don't care how many times you have to call me. If, if there are questions, I will always take your call. I promise. And she never, ever went back on that. I mean, there were days when I had to call her eight, ten times over one story after another. And um, when, when the press knows that I will have accurate answers, then they, you know, that, I, get a, I get cut a break, too. And, yeah. and, and, I, and it's not so pressure-packed. And, and we establish relationships, and they count on me. And she knows that, and it all ends up working out beautifully. I think your point, a couple of things that I think is really important, which is that the press person always have instant access right. in order to get answers. And then that that press person herself or himself has credibility, never exactly. lies. Exactly. Never lies. One and, lie will kill you. And here's, here's how I dealt with that. Nancy Reagan lied about her age. And, but she... Everybody sort of knew that. I know, but <laughs> the, what happened is every time her birthday approached, the press would start calling me because they knew it was driving me crazy. And they'd say, so how old is she this year? And I would say, uh, Mrs. Reagan says she is... Da, da, da. I never, you know, that was how I kept my credibility. At the la just before I left, she did a big interview with Chris Wallace. And he sat down and he looked at her and he said, so, Nancy how old are you? And she, went, she sort of paused for a minute and she said, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> and afterwards I said, why didn't you say that five years ago? You would have made my life so much. We both burst out laughing. And I kept saying, why would you lie about it? She was, it was one year difference. Yeah. Why would you lie about one year? It just seemed so silly to me. It was just it was very funny. Did you find that you worked for her for just the first term? Four, yeah, into, two months into the second. 
and then you decided to leave. Yes. But you were able to maintain a relationship with her? Well, not only that, the whole time we, any of us worked for her, we called her Mrs. Reagan. Of course. And the day I left, she said, I want you to start calling me Nancy, which was the signal. And she started calling me. And um, I lost my husband a few years later. She called me once a week for a year just to check in. And, and she, oh, her father told her that grieving people need to cry and that, that most people are very uncomfortable about that. So they don't ask someone who's just lost a spouse or a loved one. They, don't, they try to avoid it. And so she always asks. And that was a lesson I took from her, because she would sit there and make me cry. I mean, she would make me cry before she'd hang up that phone. <laughs> and that's a pretty good friend. Yeah. And, and many years later, I returned this, the favor, because she called me one day, and she said, I don't know what, I, something's happened here. I don't know what to do about it. And I said, what? This is after Ronald Reagan's Alzheimer's was obvious. She got a call from John Kennedy, Jr., and he wanted, he was starting George Magazine. And he wanted to send a photographer out to photograph Ronald Reagan uh, as the face of Alzheimer's. And she said, I know it's important to help people understand about Alzheimer's, but I just don't, I don't know if this is right. And she said, what should I do? And I said, think about this. If you had Alzheimer's, and he had to make the decision for you, what would you want it to be? And she paused for about five seconds, and she said, you're right, I can't do it. And that was when I felt like I had returned the favor. Well, it's so nice to meet you, and, and thank, thank you, you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate that. It was that. a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you again. A Lady in Red, a great book to read. When the Sunday Business Page continues, two broadcasting legends, Larry Richard and Jimmy Crenn, and a new venture with Giant Eagle for all of us 